Alright guys, today we're going to play a nice little peaceful visual novel about romance. Um, because I've been tuckered out from school and I just need a nice relaxing game to play through. And hopefully it's nice and relaxing and happy and whatnot. But today we're playing Without Romance. As always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description. I saw this hadn't had to, somebody read through the whole game yet, so I'm down to do it. Um, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Let's see. An outsider would likely not believe it. I can still barely believe it myself. If I wake up and realize this is all just a dream, I wouldn't be surprised. A fairy tale. That's the only way I can describe it. I loved these sto those stories as a kid, fantasizing about being one of the many princesses. And now here I sit, enjoying the view with Prince Charming by my side. Just like how those stories end. Except, love is not our happy ending. I wonder if this is a multi-ending game. In which case, that will be rough. All visual novels are rough to get all the endings. There had once been a time I had dreams. A time I had dared to have hopes of my own in life. To live life free and explore all the world had to offer. How childish I had been. To think that I could escape to become more than I was. Yet as a child, my folly knew no bounds. My eyes had been glued to the pages of a solitary book. The vibrant colors faded from overuse. The shining white castles Dining white of castles turned to dull gray. I'd once asked my mother what it might be like to live in such a castle. She stopped, gently laid down her dishcloth, and turned to tell me a story. A realm of banquets, rooms to plenty, and best of all, the home of Prince Charming. A gallant gentleman, she said. Not that nine-year-old me knew what a gallant gentleman was. In our city, the Yamatos were as close to fairy tale royalty as we could ever dream of finding. Their land was spacious, their house warm, and their stomachs full. Everything that ours were not. But how could we ever hope to compare? Their prestige was unmatched, and their dedication to 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 wow, to tradition unrivaled. Even their marriages couldn't have escaped their pedigree. What they sought? I don't know. Only the finest. And yet, somehow, some way, I'd planted a seed in the mind of my parents that their little girl had dreams of grandeur. grandeur. To be clad in finery, to lead the life of a princess. It made sense then that my mother and father would put the wheels in motion to set me upon a path to, the, to a throne for which I'd barely qualified. My merits? Simply that I was one of the most intelligent for my age. With nothing, with near nothing to my name, there is no better way to pass the time than to commit whatever knowledge I could find to memory. Such was how I had gone year after year with only the finest of grades. How convenient, then, that intellect sat at the top of the Yamato's pecking order. I would have once thought beauty would be key, but every family had the, has their own taste, and they were no different. The reception room is filled with girls my age. Maybe a few are a few you are a year older, but that isn't the biggest difference. Dressed in frills and vibrant colors, these girls chatter away. I could tell, I could tell, I can tell. Oh wow, I'm struggling with words, boy. Many already knew one another. Maybe it's an aloofness I put out that keeps them away, but more likely it's the patched up clothes my mother had handed me earlier that day. Only the finest for our little princess, she said, combing my hair. I should have known I have no place at this ball, and I have not the blessing of Cinderella. I hear he's quite handsome. He must be quite dashing. Really? My maid told me the young master was a quiet type, though that's nothing but servant gossip. The talk around me only cements my place here. What could I even offer these people? My own lips mutter treason. A glance round shows the candidates forming their own groups and as a hierarchy of extravagance forms hierarchy of extravagance forms. As Yuva still stands alone, every, even one girl who would make a fine addition to any cir social circle. Her golden hair bobs as she bounces in excitement, even managing to bring a smile to my face. I take a deep breath. Nothing good comes from staying n nervous, as my father might say. Between the heat of the room and the chilled drinks covering the tables, a mess covers my glasses. Taking them in hand, I wipe them on my dress only to feel glares from all around burning into my skin. That's nothing new. 
A set of doors across the room slide open. There is silence, a far cry from my home. How nice that would be. Through the doorway walks a woman in a most gorgeous suit. But what catches my eye is a young boy walking behind her. After closing the doors behind them, the woman turns to, to address us. Her words barely register. Isn't it just polite lip service? Around me, the other girls seem to buzz with newfound excitement at the mention of the name. Oh, oh, oh. Poured way too much alcohol. Alrighty. We're in. With a polite bow, the woman steps aside, offering the stage to the young boy that had entered with her. Though he's my age, he holds a poise that fell beyond his, beyond his years. Once more, the platitudes wash over me, and I fix my eyes on the boy commanding the room while all the nervous giggles follow, flow through the guests. My mind keeps ticking over. His words aren't important. If anything, the whispers shooting through the room tells me, tell me all I need to know. Ren is the prince of this castle, and this, for the sake of my family, I must be his princess. Alright. God, I struggle with that intro part, man. Alcohol will prevail. I heave a long, exhausted sigh. <sighs> What's with the long face now? Come on, smile. Ma, you've taken too many pictures. Let's go already. But it's your big day. She tinkers with the camera in her hand, careful as to not accidentally break it. I was dying to attend it if it weren't for work. She asked me to take as many pictures instead. One is enough. Every other take is just the same face doing the same pose in front of the same gate. Then change it up, silly. <laughs> her eyes scan the area and lock onto a group of my classmates floating around the schoolyard. She points at them with her pinky. There, do you see them? They're taking lots of pictures as well. I bet you bet you they barely pass their classes. Meanwhile, Miss Valid Victorian here thinks she deserves less. Grades and pictures are not are not related. Besides, they're making memories with their friends. Mine is just for commemoration. Call your friends then. I'd be happy to take their pictures too. I don't have any. Forget it. See? Now move to the, to the left a little bit and give me a big smile. The shutter clicks yet again. It's not about the pictures I'm complaining about. It's just embarrassing standing here while my classmates whose names I already can't remember are passing us. I'm glad Pa isn't here. There's no notice knowing how embarrassing this would be. This is a once in a lifetime moment and I know that I should let them indulge. They are proud of my achievements, I understand, and I'm happy that they are. They're the ones I did it for after all. Perhaps it's if we'd been taking pictures at home, I would have no qualms. My mother clicks her tongue and shakes the device. Darn, batteries are low already. That means it's time to go at least. At last. I should have brought the charger with me. Oh, I know. There's a restaurant that just opened nearby. Why don't we treat ourselves there? Don't you need to go to work? Not for another hour. Let's just head home so you can rest before you go. You haven't eaten anything since this morning. I'll cook something myself. We don't need to go to a restaurant for that. We don't have the money either. Of course we... No, we don't. We're already behind rent because of this gown and that camera. That's for your papa and I to worry, to worry about. You, on the other hand, just enjoy today, okay? You're about to be part of the Yamoto family. Money should be the least of your worries. Not until the marriage is final. This is tragic, bro. So prissy. This world is suck. Like, her whole future is like deciding upon getting hitched to this dude. This is a tragic, dude. How are you going to make the Yamato kid like you if you're like that? I don't really have to have him like me. She sighs, touching her cheek. Uh, I've always been worried you're trying to get yourself into something you truly don't understand. You don't truly understand, whatever. Like what? This entire thing. You don't seem to be seeing marriage in the way you should. I'm seeing it in the, the way the Yamatos do. I'll be fine. Honey, if this is a huge commitment and you seem to be taking it lightly. Marrying someone you don't have feeling for, it's, that's... You can still kindly decline in it and pursue something you want instead. But this is what I want. 
I've worked hard to get where I we are now. I'm not backing out because when it's already within reach. God, my nose is killing me, dog. Oh my god. You've got enough things to worry about already. I can worry about myself now. She shows a dissatisfied frown, but chooses not to pry any further. You said you're going there tomorrow? Formally meeting them and introducing myself. The last time we met was during that big party nine years ago, after all. I'd be surprised if he still remembers me. <sighs> I would love to accompany you there, but I... I'll be fine, it's just a visit. I might also visit them frequently now that school's over, to know more about what's needed of me after all. You'll have time to come eventually. Somehow I've distracted her enough out of the idea of eating out. I pull her on the arm and start walking home. Eh. The following day comes. I find myself standing in front of the Yamato's estate. Thank you for coming all the way today, Madam Risa. Oh my god. Thank you for coming all the way today, Madam Risa. An unfamiliar woman in a business suit lowers her head as she greets me at the door. I have not introduced myself, nor have I told them that I'll be visiting today, but she some seems to be expecting me. I lower my head back at her. The f these formal formalities may be normal in this household, but I may not be get used to it. Oh, thank you. I'm here to meet Sir Rinton Yam Yamato. Yamato. Of course, madam. Right this way. She steps aside and points with her hand, inviting me in. I follow her to what looks like a waiting room, more spacious than our family family's entire apartment. The door o doors open directly to the garden. In one corner of the room sits a guy busy with his pen. I recognize him right away, even though it's been half my life since we met. Since we last met. Oh my god. Your fiancé has arrived, sir. The guy looks up and immediately drops his work. He kindly points to the seat in front of him with his palm. Ah oh, yes. Please take a seat. Risa, right? Yes, sir. I sit at the center table cautiously as he's just standing up to join me. Just call me Ren. We are already in great engaged, after all. Okay, Sir Rin. May I get you something to drink, madam? Oh, um, I'm good, thank you. We'll take tea for now, Ruth. Ruth? Babe Ruth? God dang it. <laughs> Her name's Ruth and she's a babe. <laughs> okay, god damn it. Right away, sir. Ruth lowers her head once again and she as she exits the room. We could have prepared something better had we known you were coming today. It's fine, don't mind me. Nervous? Just a little bit out of place. You are part of the family now. Treat this household as your own, and don't hesitate to ask for assistance whenever. I'll try, thank you. We glance over at the table he was just at. Papers rustling in the wind are held down by a small piece of rock. You seem to be in the middle of something. I'm sorry to disturb you. Nothing to be sorry about. Work has just piled up recently. I hope you don't mind the mess. Not at all. His kind tone and welcoming attitude made me, made me comfortable despite his rather impassive expression. It's really nice to meet you again. I heard you were at the top of your class. That's admirable. That means a lot coming from you. I am honored that you have chosen me amongst all the other Gary candidates. It was my parents who did, but I trust their decisions. They're not around, unfortunately. No one knows when they'll return yet. I see, I shall offer them my gratitude when I finally meet them. Were you homeschooled? That is correct. My parents prefer tutors to ensure that I'm being taught thoroughly in each subject. I see, that must be nice. I suppose I'm also at the top of my class. That's one thing in common. 
<laughs> your class of one dog? <laughs> uh, see? <laughs> that was cute. It was clever. I like that. He cracks a slight smile with that playful comment. Ruth comes in, carrying a pot in one hand and a stack of teacups in the other. She courteously, pla courteously places them on our table. Young master, you have another guest today. Shall I let her in? Please do. As you wish. Ren pours himself a cup of tea as Ruth stands up and leaves. I'm a bit confused what I should do. Shall I get going? No, no, it's fine. A few people have just been visiting to show their gratitude and blessings. It would be better if you're here with me for them to greet. Is that so? Why don't you move over to my side? Sure. This is not romantic. This is like robots. These are robots in love. I walk on my knees to take a seat right beside him as he requested. It's nerve wracking both being this close to him and having to meet another candidate. Ruth returns, this time with another guest, with the other guest behind her. You know, I, this is crazy to me, but I think this is still like commonly practiced in Japan, which makes this a little bit super realistic. I think it is anyways, from what I've read, but I could be wrong. She enters the room without, ma without waiting for an introduction. Hello, Rose. Hey, Ren, it's been a while. Ruth quietly closes the door behind this energetic girl as she makes herself comfortable, comfortably seated across from us. Seated across from us. Would you like some tea? Sounds lovely, but I'll pass. Mom and Dad couldn't make it today, but I wanted to come visit at all costs. That's understandable. How have you been? Absolutely great. And your work? Never ending. As always, then. They both giggle. She turns to me and finally acknowledges my existence. Ah, you must be Risa. I am. Nice to meet you. So cute. What a lucky guy you are, Rin. I can't help but notice how expressive Rin is now. Right now. From the looks of it, they've been good friends for a while already. Maybe Rin just feels more comfortable with her. Bah! With her around. Anyway, if I had to guess, other girls had paid you a visit already, and I'm here for the same reason. I'm really happy for you two. She takes a step back to prostrate herself, prostrate herself before us. Now prostrate herself. <laughs> On behalf of my family, I would like to thank the Yamato family for the great opportunity I was given. It means a lot. I am just about to take a bow back instinctively when Ren gently taps me on the knee. The pleasure was ours, Rose. I appreciate your participation. Ruff sits back up with a bright smile on her face. Have you guys decided when the wedding will be? It hasn't been decided yet. We would like to have Risa and her family comfortable with us first. It may not be for another year. Ah, uh, do let us know when it's once it's set. My parents would love and I would love to be there. That's a quick save, just in case something wild happens. We will surely send you an invitation. Great! I can't wait to see you in your wedding dress, Risa. Thank you. I'm sure you would look better in one. Don't put yourself down. She helps herself up. Well then, I have to take my leave. Thanks for the visit, Rose. Take care on your way home. I will. Have a great day. She bows once more with a big smile and heads towards the door and then balls because she was thought she was the chosen one. Because they actually cared for each other, but I was chosen because I'm smart. She waves at the last minute before closing the door before, behind her. The once chauffeur room goes quiet. Such a lively girl. She always, she's always, she has always been. You two seem close. Ah, yes. She had kept me company every once in a while. Do you like her? That may have come out of my mouth without think without me thinking, but I I am curious. He looks at me puzzled for a few seconds before directing his stare outside. Does it look like it? Smile never left your face the entire time she was here. 
I don't know much about that, but maybe I am. He massages the bridge of his nose. And you're okay with this? He takes a sip of his tea, but it's obvious he's dodging the question. He gently places the cup back down on the table, playing, it, playing with it by tipping it just enough for the liquid to reach the edge of the rim. I'm sorry if I'm prying into your matters. It's fine. He continues to play with his half cup, half full cup. How much do you know about the Yamato family? Um, I know about it being the most prestigious family. It doesn't look like that's the response he was waiting for. I try to think of another answer. I know that your family values traditions a lot, staying true to the customs that had been passed down throughout the generations. I know that you prioritize the physical and mental wellness of your descendants above all else. I know that the first burn gets to inherit everything that gets passed down to the next generation. Funny, isn't it? What is? That I get to inherit everything. I'm the one to pass down the tradition to my children and so on. Even when I'm not even the first bird. Oh wow, I just hit full redneck. Even when I'm not even the first born. There we go, that's as good as I can get. That's my speech of him acting up. I turn to him, down, dumbfounded by the news I'm hearing for the first time. I'm not familiar with their family matters to begin with, but what I'm learning right now is not a small matter. The fact that I had, have not heard of it, even as a rumor, means no one outside their family knows about it. I have a brother, you see. Much older one. May I ask where he is now? Who knows? He cut all ties with us a long time ago. You see, he chose to stick with his selfish decision. You see, he chose to stick. Wow. <laughs> You see, he chose to stick with his selfish decision over his duties. Chose to be a with Chose to be with a woman he loves against my parents' will. Against our family tradition. That's a novel worthy story. That's a novel worthy story. It's the first time in our bloodline that something like this has happened. Romantic with somebody say, grave even. But I see neither of those. He's a disgrace, prioritizing his own emotions. Our traditions exist for a reason, and we kept our status because of it. I think you're being over harsh on him because you want to do the same thing. Probably. I am my family's last chance. I won't ruin our tradition for some trivial emotions. Takes another sip. I'm lost for words. Rin's devotion to his family has earned my utmost respect, though part of me sides with his brother. I don't think his brother's decision was wrong in any way. I don't know where my alcohol bottle went in any way. I have not experienced love yet myself, but that's not to say I don't understand it. Do 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 do, porn a shot. The mere image of wanting to be with someone else warms my heart. It's beautiful. To be deprived of that because of your duties? That must be tough. As much as I would want to know that feeling firsthand, I'm not blessed with the person I feel so strongly towards. But Ren, he knows that feeling and chooses to keep it to himself. Something's just not right. What do you feel about Rose? I... You want to spend time with her? That doesn't matter now. It still does. Your dedication to your family is impressive, and I can tell you've done a lot. You should be allowed to be selfish every once in a while. Even if it's just to spend a little time with someone you're attracted to. Why is my fiancé asking me to spend time with another girl? I don't see anything wrong with spending time with someone. Besides, I think my fiancé deserves happiness before the ring is in place. His hesitant gaze is right at me. I've still got a lot to learn around here, and the wedding is not for another year, as you said. Are you really sure about this? 
Am I suggesting out of sympathy? Out of pity? Out of guilt? My gut tells me this is the right thing to do. Rose can give him something I probably will never be able to. I would be hurt to see him bereaved. I am. I insist. He lets a breeze out of, through his nose. <laughs> I don't know how to make it. What is a breeze through his nose, dog? Oh, wow. I'm going to take my shot on that one. <laughs> he lets a breeze out of his nose. I'll have her requested for another visit soon. Without much opposition for him, I get up and talk to Ruth to do just that. I think it's nice that she thinks so much about him. I think, I'm hoping what happens is Risa and him, like, grow, like, um, a relationship with each other. This kind of reminds me of that red, uh, that red string anime where the dude has, like, a childhood friend that he has, like, a super crush with, but then he has a r arranged, like, relationship that he has to do for culture and whatnot, and then he actually starts falling in love with the chick that's he, that he's arranged with. I hope that's what happens here. Rose had, had arranged to come visit us again, visit again after a few days, and I've made sure I'm glad, I'm here to greet her. Risa! Good afternoon, how are you today? Fantastic! You're looking adorable today. Why, thank you. I'm sorry to have you over on such short notice. Don't mention it. Was there something wrong? I rest my cheek on my palm, pretending to be constructing my statement in my head. Tell you the truth, I've got a favor to ask. If it's anything I can do, I would like to help Ruth out around the house, and I would not have much time to spend with Ren. I noticed the other day that you're good friends with him, and was wondering if you're willing to keep him company from time to time. Oh. He looks at me if, as if waiting for a catch. Oh, absolutely. It would be an honor. Really? That would be wonderful. I'm sorry to have you involved in this. I just don't know anyone else. I know it's my responsibility and all. She takes a step closer towards me and holds my hand with both of hers. Don't worry, Risa. I have you covered. I've got plenty of time to spare now anyway. Great. I ask her to escort her to Ren's study. Rose has come to visit, Ren. Ah, yes. Come in, Rose. A smile on his face is back. I knew this was the right thing to do. I hope you don't mind me being here. I've just got nothing better to do. Not at all. I'd love to have you over. It must be tough being confined to your house on this lovely day. I'm behind work. I can't complain. What about you? Warm atmosphere doesn't take long to develop. My presence is just in the way of them. Well then, I'll have to excuse myself. Ah, uh, you're not journeying, joining us? I'm afraid I have to help Ruth out. Are you sure? You don't have to. I would like to be of any help to her. To her. All right then. Don't overexert yourself. I'll be sure not to. Please enjoy your time together. They continue where their conversation left off almost instantly. It's fun watching them chatter like kids left alone at, the, at a park. I take my exit quietly as to not interrupt them and head next door where Ruth is. Hello. Madam Risa. I stop her as she, just as she's about to stand and bow. Auto save. It's fine, don't be considerate of me. I can't do that, madam. I know, I'm just not used to being catered to. Perhaps you can make an exception? Understood, madam. I would prefer being called by my name instead, but that might be too much to ask right away. At least she agrees not to lower her head every time she greets me. I'd say that's progress. Is there anything I can help you with? I have everything under control, madam. I see. I'm here if you happen to need a hand. I'm, I'd be happy to help, I insist. Keeps up her professional demeanor, but her slight body movement tells me she's still hesitant to give me anything to do. Well, can I at least take a seat here until you need me? 
I'm going to pour shot. By all means, madam, please make yourself comfortable. I nod and take a seat on her small couch as she goes back to work. The room is surrounded by bookshelves, housing a variety of books. Each looks more complicated than the last. Does she read all these? Are these for work? Records? Are you sure about this, Madam Risa? About what? Having Rose over for young Master Ken. Ren. Jesus. Alright, Ken. Street Fighter. <laughs> Dang it. I'm sure you've cut how he feels about her. You think Ren will change his mind? Master Ren would not oppose his parents' pick. I'm afraid it is you who might change your mind, madam. I put my When that happens, the Yamato would pick the next in line in selection. The person happens to be the one Master Ren is with right now. So Rose is the second choice. It must have been a close match. I'm not sure why Ruth thinks I would change my mind, however. Is that so? I can tell you I don't plan to change my mind at all. I'm just letting them spend time with each other. Understood. Are you sure you don't need help with anything right now? I'm just organizing Young Master Ren's month as much as I can right now, madam. Understood. That reminds me. What does Ren do work on anyways? Young Master is a statistical a analyst. I see. Sounds complicated. He has always had a strong affinity with numbers. He's only still young, but it won't be long until his parents' friends would start consulting him professionally. At such a young age, is that the family business of the Yamatos? It is not, madam. Is that so? I would have guessed they're all passing down a single profitable family business. I'm afraid they don't have such a thing as a family business. The Yamato family operates under a single simple statement. Family, freedom, and fun. What? What? Plot twist. Wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> freedom. We're missing that one already. Fun. Mm, okay. Okay, let's see where this goes. Each member of the family is free to pursue what they're passionate about. What if someone wants to do nothing? Then they would just do just that. That won't be very profitable, would it? How are they able to hold their status for such a long time if such is the case? The answer to that is so simple yet complicated to explain. Keep it short, due to their basic needs being already met, they are able to focus on doing what they like, and they become the best at it. If it happens to gather them money, they wouldn't need it for themselves, and would instead pass it down to their children to make sure they live comfortable lives. And the cycle essentially continues. This is why it is important to them to, that they produce healthy offsprings. I see. I can't say I fully understand it, but somehow it all makes sense. But you're now part of the family, the same goes for you. You're free to pursue anything you want. I haven't thought much about what I wanted to do. I was under the impression that I would be helping around. Of course not, madam. Well, until I figure out it out, that's what I'll do. Understood. Turns out there's a lot I still need to learn about the Yamato family. Being with Ruth somehow makes me more comfortable than with Ren. The conversation dies down and my eyes go back to wandering around the room. Could I perhaps bring you something to drink? Oh, she said drink. It's time to drink, boys. Let's go. Ah. Don't worry, I can help myself. Oh. That shot hit differently. I stand up and head for the exit. Oh, God. I happen to pass by Ren's room. I can't help but stop and watch him. how much fun they're having. Sitting at the corner of the room with such a nice view. I crack a small, hidden smile, proud of what I have done for Ren. It was definitely a good idea. I leave them alone for the entire day. Rose starts coming over almost every day, leaving just before afternoon ends. Every day without fail. 
Each day she visits, it seems like they have new stories to share. It's amazing. Imagine if they spent every day like this, unending smiles and laughters. They look so cute together. They're almost made for each other. I wonder how Rose feels about Rem. She was a candidate, so I'm sure it has crossed her mind. I'm sure she was prepared to develop feelings for him if she hasn't already. Something I didn't do. If it weren't for me, the thought. I shake the thought out of my head. In the next few days, no few weeks, preoccupied, preoccupied my time with helping R Ruth out. Leaving Ren and Rose almost undisturbed. Hmm. Poor Risa. Frantic footsteps ring out down the hallway, their owner flying from one room to the next. Quick glance at her wrist brings a subtle, subtle frown to her face. Ruth? Ren's attendant turns to face me, her worry dissipating in the blink of an eye. If I hadn't just seen it for myself, I would have never guessed anything was wrong. Oh, Risa, how good to see you. You caught me at a difficult time. You didn't happen to pass Sir Wren on your way in, did you? I shake my head. What's the matter? If there's something I can do... A moment of hesitation and another glance at her watch is all it takes. You would be so kind. It's not terrible pressing. Only some papers to be signed. But I have my own schedule to keep. Shall I find him for you? Relief wells in Ruth's eyes, but her... <coughs> <coughs> but never cracks her composed visage. Professional to a fault, but nothing short of excellent in her work. No wonder she's by her inside. But then what of me? I'll leave it to you then, Risa. She wastes no time in dashing off, a quick bow offered in parting. What idle thoughts I had, I'd had were scattered. Where would Ren be at a time like this? If it's Ren, it's hardly a question. First port of call would be a study, and with the sun high in the sky, it would be quite the sight. I stride towards the study, bouncing with every step. Maybe I'm getting better, getting to know him better than I thought. Muffled voice is reaching my ear from down the hallway, one clearly written, but the other... He sounds happy. As indifferent as I am to my future husband, a smile creases my face. Everybody deserves some joy in life. I slide up to the door, peeking through the gap. Inside, a pair of figures shine in the light, a deep warmth embracing them. Are you sure you have time for me now, Ren? Last I visited you, you told me your schedule. Nothing that can't wait, Rose. You needed to see me, didn't you? There it is. The warm tone that I've never been given. The tone tinged with sadness. The atmosphere is heavy enough to root me to the spot outside. Though Ruth had has trusted me to find Ren. Fill my heart that I should. No, shouldn't. No, I mustn't step in. It's been a while since we enjoyed the sun like this, hasn't it? About two years. It feels so long ago, and yet, like only yesterday. Friend? Her golden locks balance as she spins on her companion, his eyes widening as the ray of lights, rays of light set her glow. I don't dare breathe. The deathly silence that hangs in the air as she calls his name smothers all. Are you happy like this? He looks past Rose, avoiding her gaze. I always enjoy the, these evenings. Aha. I always enjoy these evenings. Ren? Gaze is pulled back to her unwavering eyes. How many more evenings like this might we have as things are? It won't last forever. Hmm. Rose steps closer. I'm happy for you, Ren. You found somebody we can sh who can share your burden. Rose. Does she make you happy? Rin's gaze drops. She's what's best for the Yamato family. What I desire doesn't matter. I won't become my brother. Don't talk like that. Rose snaps back at him, his gaze shooting back to meet hers. 
You might not think there's more to life than your family, Ren, but don't sacrifice yourself. Then what am I supposed to do? You don't know what it's like having your older brother walk out on you. Here's a decision to elope as he looks you dead in the eye. For the first time in my life, I hear Ren raise his voice and flinch. Yet the girl before him stands strong, taking on his rage. Do you know what his eyes told me? Sorry. He made it clear to me, then and there, I'd lost. He sacrificed my future, our future, so he could live on his own. Rose's eyes widen. I'm sorry, Ren. For what? None of this is your fault, Rose. I really blew it, didn't I? If I'd won the selection. But you didn't. No amount of regret will change that now. Ren's voice strains as he forces out words he doesn't want to say. Hey, Ren. Yes, Rose. Can you see us standing here just like this in 10 years? In 30? We couldn't. The head of the Yamatos entertaining a family, former candidate in private for so many years? It would be scandalous. Not if I wasn't a former candidate. Except closer, closing what little distance still remains between them. I'm sure I wouldn't make a bad wife. My throat runs dry as I refuse to swallow, lest I make a sound. Should I interrupt? If I don't, then what becomes of me, of my family? But what of Rose? I find myself mouthing, mouthing traitorous words. Only I back down, then Rose would be able to take my place. Stuck in limbo, I find myself unable to call out, and then unable to walk away. Truly, how pathetic am I? I am. Excuse me. I gave my board to my family, Risa. Teresa. To not fall through. Would be a shame upon the Yamatos, I know. Rose takes a deep breath, drawing her shoulders back. I've always known your pride would come first, but somehow I found myself drawn to the side to that side of you too. Say Ren stretches out her hand hand, gently grasping Ren's arm, his own fingers reaching for hers, but curl away. What is it, Rose? Can I ask you for one last favor? Of course. Oh he's cheating on me! What? This is tragic. This is the worst. I don't like this. What? With eyes closed, she leans into Ren until her lips meet. And yet, I feel not an ounce of jealousy, no desire. The pair remain for what feels like a lifetime. So slowly do mere seconds pass before my eyes. And then a cold shiver shoots down my spine. Rose opens her eyes, meeting mine. She's abusing this situation. I think Rose is like secretly super manipulative and she just wants to like take what I've earned because she's not smart enough. So she's been like worming her way in. Cause I feel like this whole setup, sorry for the long rant in the middle of the video. I feel like this whole setup would create a lot of conniving people that would do anything to get what they can. Even if they were lacking abilities like her. I think she's subtle, subtly trying to tear us apart while seeming like a good person. How long had she known? Had Rin known? She still did in front of me like a scumbag. My head is spinning as my pulse races. But as if nothing happened, Rose closes her eyes once more for the final moment of her embrace with Rin. As she draws away, I can't see if Rin knows, follows. Part of me doesn't want to know. It should be crazy, dog. They finally separate. Rose takes three steps back. Neither dare to make a sound, lest they break the spell. There is only one recourse. Giving them a few moments, I pick myself up. Okay, Risa, you've got this. And enter the room. Oh, Ren, so you were hiding here after all. Ruth sent me too. To attend my duties, I'm aware. It would be best I don't keep her. Thank you, Risa. With heavy words, Ren walks from the room. 
screen. I watch him leave, my back turned on the girl who just spilled her heart out. Words abandon me as Red vanishes behind beyond the doorway. Her whisper fills the room. That must have given you quite the show. I didn't want to interrupt the two of you. How thoughtful. Yeah, she's she's crazy. This chick's like crazy manipulative. Her eyes are distant, looking somewhere far far away to something beyond her reach. A long tired sigh abraces her lips, gazing at them only reminds me of their embrace. <sighs> Be honest with you, Risa. Yes? This is my first time meeting a voyeur. My heart really started racing when I saw you. I can't help but worry you might have awakened something. Can we hurry up and put that behind us? I'm not particularly proud of it, you know. My brows knit together, but Rose only chuckles at my frustration. I knew it. She's a freaking non-dare evil chick. That's all. Oh. If I get a choice in this whole entire game, I'm not letting her take my man. It's not happening. <laughs> Ooh. When her eyes had first met mine through the doorway, could have sworn a fire burned inside, but the way she spoke... You aren't angry at sp me spying. You aren't angry for me at me for spying on you. Angry? Hmm. I'm turning my stomach makes the way for her words stretch on and on. Is she doing it to me on purpose? Yes. I say forgive and forget. There are worse things to worry about in life, and I'm sure I'd have done the same. I breathe a sigh of relief only to hear that trademark giggle. I don't think we've ever had much of a chat before, have we? For all the time we spent around one another, it amazes me. I think back on the day we, days we spent skittering around the Yamato estate. Despite me being Ren's fiance, Rose had dominated his time. I'd rarely had a chance to even offer her my greetings, let alone a leisurely talk. I think you're right. How odd. Isn't it? I couldn't help but smile at the idle chatter, warmth slowly returning to the room. What do you do for fun, Risa? I've been trying gardening out lately for my, myself, but I'm loath to admit, but I think my name is the closest, I've, closest I'll get to that talent. I choke back a laugh, but not well enough for Rose's keen, keen eyes, a grim br grin breaching her face. That's a surprise. I'd have thought you'd be a natural. If only, I'm sure you're a magnificent gardener, Risa. Gardening, huh? My eyes turn to Red's garden. Not so much as a single leaf out of place. I can't even begin to imagine the work that goes into maintaining it. Rose tilts her head softly to one side, regarding me curiously. You never tried? I've never had the chance. Our home doesn't have a garden, after all. Oh, oh I see. That's quite a shame. Although, before long, I'm sure you could have you could have an entire field to yourself if you wished. Lucky. Rose's slips twist into a wry smirk. There's a lot of luck in this world, and if it finds me or my family, I'd be a fool to refuse it. Well, it certainly seems you'll be you'll all be living a good life. How nice it will be! My body stiffens. The fire is back, burning inside my, her eyes, as fiercely as before. I clench my fists until my knuckles turn white, fighting to hold what courage I can muster. I could want nothing more than the warmth of the, for the parents who gave me everything. My, how touching. It really brings a tear to the eye. Rose dabs at the corner of her eye, dry as a bone. You stop to think what it costs along the way, Risa? To be chosen by the Yabantos despite your humble roots? It's nothing short of a fantasy. To meet your prince for it to be love at first sight? Oh wait, that's not quite right, is it? Rose? I guess my future with Rin just wasn't meant to be. My mouth runs dry. What else can I say? She's a necessary casualty? Go find somebody new? I don't think I like seeing you two apart. Rose's eyes twitch. And yet, you still toss us aside. For what? Money? 
There's plenty of money in the world, but not only so many soulmates, don't you see that? Pain flares up on my hand, my nails digging into my skin. She's not wrong. In fact, if anybody is in the wrong, it's me for being so selfish. For asking so much, and yet... I won't apologize. You're sacrificing Ren's future for your own. Doesn't that bother you? Don't doom Ren to a loveless life when you're nothing but a gold digger. I feel punched in my gut with her trailing words. She's right. For the sake of her, my family, I would sacrifice Ren's love with Rose a hundred times over. It means having the money for a good life. There's nothing I won't, I won't do. And yet, part of me knows I'm being greedy. No matter how my heart might waver, I won't fall to Some chances are too precious to let slip by. A bang shoots out as the door flies open, and the doorway stands Rand. Rand, his eyes trained on the ground between us. You're back. That didn't take long. My words, I unwittingly did undo the magic that had bound him to that spot. His eyes were gaining focus. He strides towards Rose. No, surely. Ren, wait. I shoot out a hand, but he slips by too quickly until... Thank you. Get her. This house doesn't welcome those who have ba would badmouth our family. Ren, she didn't. You're soon to be part of the fam Yamato family, Risa. That's how things are decided, and no matter what some might wish. His voice catches slightly in his throat, but he continues forcing the words out. No matter what some might wish, that's how it will be. I'm sure you can find your way out, Rose. Or shall I have Ruth escort you? The girl clutches her cheek, refusing to let tears spill over from her eyes as she stares defiantly back at Ren. In that moment, I can tell she holds a strength that I can never dream of. I'm sorry, Ren. Goodbye. Goodbye. Such are the final words between the two. Rose is gone, never looking back. Unable to see how Ren's eyes follow her departure, or how they shine in the light. I walk to his side, taking a few steps back. Taking a few steps back. He keeps clenching his fist, open, closed, open, closed, but the shaking won't stop. I'm sorry, if I had, if I had handled things better. You too. Huh, Ren, what do you? I have work to finish by tonight. Ruth is relying on me. Even as his eyes refuse to meet mine, the lie in his voice rings loud and clear. The sight of Ren's back is haunting. Once so strong, so confident, is now shriveled, his gaze lingering on his stinging hand. Tomorrow, then? I wait for parting words or a wave of his hand. When it's clear there will be no such sign, I leave the room. Wiping the mist from my glasses, I fight the burning in my eyes. This is tragic. What the hell? The house is quiet. For such a large estate, that might be so unusual. But still, I take a long pause as I step inside on my daily visit. Is it worth my time? I'm not so sh I'm not sure. For days, I've not heard a sound from Ren. The sound of his hand, I rub my arm, a chill running through my body. So, only I had thought things through more. Risa, are you okay? Eh? Any before me, Ruth regards me with a good deal of confusion. When did she get it? It doesn't matter. What am I doing? Turning up only to space out? Oh, it's you, Ruth. Sorry. I've had a lot of my mind recently, lately. Ruth flashes at me an understanding smile. Even though she hadn't been party to the event surrounding Rose's departure, she's watched over Ren for long enough to pick up the signs. I take it you're here for Ren today, too? Is he taking visitors? The past couple of visits, I've only arrived only to pace outside Ren's study. Seeing him sitting alone, whatever words I wanted to give him had vanished from my mind. Would he even want to see me? That fear had kept me distant, even as he suffered. She turns her head, glancing towards what could only be Ren's location, gears turning over and over before she lets out a steadying breath. 
seems I've forgotten whatever head he said. Ruth? I'm sure you said something, but... Oh dear, how unlike me. It would seem... In all the extra work, I haven't slipped my mind. Ruth hangs her head in shame. She smiles as she spins her back to me, pacing the way into the depths of the state. Thank you, Ruth, for forgetting my duties. For a future member of the Yamatos, you do better You do better to chastise me, Risa. The usually composed Ruth unceremoniously waves her hand in parting. She's a mystery all of her own, but one I will have to unravel another day. In that case, she looked toward the study, right? I turned to follow where Ruth's eyes had part pointed moments ago. There's only one room where Ren would be, the very room I've hesitated to enter ever since that day. Really, causing her so much trouble. I'll have to complain on Ruth's behalf when I see him. To make her worry is utterly unfair of him. To uh, of him, yeah. A familiar doorway latches before me. I, my fingers curl away from the handle as I reach toward it. My heart jumping in my chest. This won't be like last time. I open the door quietly as I can, taking great care to close it behind me. Across the room, a lonely bag faces me. One step, two. On my third, I, made, I am made to pause. Ruth. You need something. I'm busy. Surely whatever it is can wait. His eyes briefly move from the grounds of the, gar of the garden to the clouds scrolling ab by above. Though our silence, he regards th them with what I can only imagine as a great indifference. And I thought I told her. I didn't want guests. How bothersome. You're lucky to have her by your side. Do you tend to turn me away? No. In a way, I'm glad to see you. This house has been felt terribly empty of late. I close the distance between us as his eyes rest to return to rest on his lap once more. Sitting beside Rin, their target becomes clear. I made it hard for you to talk to me recently. I'm sorry for that, Risa. To have acted so pathetically, it's unlike me. His fingertips curl with no wor with his words. If anybody should apologize, it should be me. If it weren't for my suggestion, this would never... Do you really think you can absolve me of my mistakes? No, Risa. I did what I did to protect the y Yamato name. You're soon to be a Yamato, just as I am. Already right, such a belitt belittlement. And his voice cracks. At the price for your own happiness? I can't just accept that, Ren. But even when I tried to help, I just drove you further apart. <laughs> a chuckle breaks forth from Ren's lips. How can you find this funny? You're my bride-to-be. Wouldn't you say you were just doing your job Magnif magnificently at that? But I'm only here for my own again. Own gain. I can never give you the future that Rose could. Rin's hand, twitch hand twitches at her name. You're right. But is there anything wrong with that? He turns his gaze on me, his eyes peering into the depths of mine. Our union. It's a business transaction. Nothing more, nothing less. Something of benefit to both parties. So you're right, Risa. I can't imagine I'll ever come to love you as I did Rose. But I can provide you with a home, and your family with security, and in turn, I'll carry on the Yamato lineage. See? A fair trade to my eyes. And don't let anybody speak to you that way again. To run your name through the dirt, to disgrace the Yamatos, to disgrace your family. A right grin comes my way, one I can't resist returning. It's so laughable, yet with this, my family's future is assured. They'll never have to worry again. I laugh. All that talk as a child of a prince whisks me away to happiness. My parents be proud. Will they condemn me for putting them first? A family for a family. Take my own. I will carry on the Yamato bloodline. My life were told as a fairy tale. What form would it take? 
Would he commend me for my de dedication? Celebrate my sacrifices in the name of the greater good? Or would I be a cautionary tale? A fable against the way of your future? Only time would tell how this story of the selfish prince might unfold. Princess might unfold. Of the girl who gave herself to a loveless life. A future without romance. Wow, that was pretty amazing, actually. Um, I think it was very interesting how they take the perspective of someone. You know, I'm happy how it ended because I think Risa deserves to be paid off because even though Ren might have loved Rose, I don't think Rose was a good person. I think Rose was highly manipulative. Or maybe she was just so caught on wanting to be with him. I, I think it was more a manipulation thing just from the way she flashed her eye at Risa. And she couldn't, like... The thing was, Rose couldn't be empathetic to Risa's situation at all. But Risa was highly empathetic to Rose and Rin's situation. Risa was a better person. Um, hopefully Rin will mature as he like goes on through life. And he'll realize that love's not how like someone can make you feel in like a short um, time span. But finding someone that... Really, I feel like it's more like how people can... They care about you. She obviously cared for Ren more than anything else. Rose really just cared about getting Ren for... I I think it was more material gain than anything. Because that's what she mainly brought up to Risa. When she's like, oh, you're set for life now. Good for you. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I honestly think that was a good ending. And I think it was a really neat perspective. Being from the person that the main character wasn't like head over heels in love. But Risa was definitely the better person, which is why I'm glad it ended that way regardless. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I'm going to try to edit out a lot of the mistakes I made during the video because I've been drinking and I really enjoyed this game. Um, if I miss any of my mistakes, I apologize for like the interruptions or whatnot. But thanks for watching. And I struggled with reading as well, but I did the best I could. <laughs> Alright, guys. Bye!